Hey guys, today I'm going to go over your exponents and scientific notation unit study guide. By the end of this video, you'll be able to review exponent rules, square and cube roots, and operations with scientific notation. And the focus is on your areas of improvement, not necessarily the things that you're great at. Although, you have proven that you are pretty good at a lot of this stuff. So that being said, go ahead and get out your study guide. It'll look like this. What I want you to do is to go ahead and do the whole study guide first by yourself, checking with the answer key that is posted. And then for every question that you don't know how to do or you forgot or you missed on the study guide, I want you to come back to this video and skip to the questions that you need help with. After you've checked your answers along with the study guide and then along with this video and you still have questions, please feel free to reach out to me through email, message, in person, whatever. So let's go ahead and get started. This is our exponents and scientific notation unit. So we're getting this study guide to get ready for our test. So solve each of the problems below. These represent the types of questions on your test. Be sure to ask questions if you need more help with the topic. So below is our I can statement. And then the standard is listed here. That's what every Kentucky middle schooler needs to know in eighth grade. We'll simplify each expression, leave answers as a value or a variable raised to an exponent. So let's go ahead and look at the first one. This section is all about exponent rules. And the first one is an example of the product rule. So we have the same base, 16, being multiplied. And the product rule says that I can then add the exponents. This is like having 10 16s and then four more 16s being multiplied. So this is the same thing as 16 to the 14th power. Number two is an example of the quotient rule. I have the base G to the 19th power being divided by the base G to the 12th power. So if you look on that paper, your yellow reference sheet, you have an example of the quotient rule. When the same base is being divided, you can subtract the exponents. And remember, this works because you could write out the G's, and when you wrote them out, they would cancel the ones that are on top of each other. So since there's more G's on top, we'll keep the G's on the top. So 19 minus 12 is 7. So G to the 7th power is your final answer. Number 3 is an example of the power rule. You have a base 20 to the 7th power, and that's being taken to the 5th power. This is like saying I have a 20 with an exponent of 7 five times. So here's just three of them, and already I can see that when they're being multiplied, I add the exponents. So the example with the product rule, the rule is, is that I can multiply these exponents. So 7 times 5 is 35. So we have a really big number, 20 to the power of 35. Number 4 has a combination of a couple of rules. Let's first of all start with this n to the 0 power. Anything to the 0 power is 1. So I just cross it out because I know that anything times 1 is just itself. So I can just cross that out. n to the 0 power is a 1. So I cross it out. I'm left with n to the 6th power, and then the whole thing is taken to the 3rd power. If it's a power to a power, I use my power rule. That means I can multiply the exponents. So 6 times 3 is 18. So I keep my base n, and 6 times 3 is 18. So my exponent would be 18. So as these are getting longer and more complex, we're starting to see that the reason that we want to use our rules of exponents is to make everything simpler and shorter. So all these answers you'll notice are about one base taken to one exponent. And that's really how we know that we're fully simplified is when we've done everything we can do to simplify it. So let's look at number five. We have an example of the quotient rule, and then we have an example of the product rule. So let's take care of our quotient rule first. So let's start with this. We have eight to the 22nd power over eight to the ninth power. If they're being divided, I can, and they have the same base, I can subtract the exponent. So 22 minus nine is 13. So I keep my base of eight, and then I take it to the 13th power. Since there's more numbers on top, my answer will be on top, so 8 to the 13th power. Bring down that times 8 to the 11th power. This is now an example of my product rule. I have the same base, 8, being multiplied. So I can add the exponents is what that rule tells me. That's the product rule. So my final answer is 8 to the power of 24. Number 6 has an example of the product rule on top of this fraction, and then the quotient rule because there is a fraction. I'm going to start by just looking at the top. 17 to the 4th power times 17 to the 10th power is an example of the product rule because I have the same base, 17, being multiplied, so I can add the exponents. So 17 to the 14th power is really what's on top, over 17 to the 5th power. I'm not done because I can simplify one more time. This is an example of the quotient rule because I have the same base being divided. That means I can subtract the exponents. 14 minus 5 is 9, and I keep the same base. So I keep the same base, 17, and do 14 minus 5, which is 9. It's so my final answer. It's 17 to the ninth power. Let's go ahead and look at the next section. It says, I can apply properties of integer exponents. So it's the same rules as before, but now we're going to add in that we can have negative exponents. We think back to the apartment. 
we always think about every number as it's being in an apartment. So every base is either the top floor or the bottom floor of an apartment. And then we can use their exponent to decide whether or not they're happy in their apartment. So let's look at this number seven. B is in the apartment. We know that B is automatically on the top floor because when you move into the apartment, everyone gets put on the top floor if it doesn't say otherwise. And B is not happy because its exponent is negative. So B has to move. B can only move one other place, and that's the bottom floor. So B's on the bottom now. Now that B's on the bottom, the exponent is happy, and we have to have something on the top floor, so we'll just put a 1. So this is your final answer. We want to simplify leaving the answer with no negative exponents. We know we're done whenever it's raised to a positive exponent. We want everybody to be happy. So 1 over B to the 8th power is it. So let's look at number 8. There's a couple of steps here to do first. Let's start out looking at this like it's an example of the power rule. So the power rule says when you have a power to a power, you multiply the exponents. This is the same thing as 3 to the negative 25th power, because I did 5 times negative 5, which is negative 25. So now I'm looking at 3 in the apartment. It didn't say that there was an apartment, so I know it's on the top floor. And that 3 is not happy being on the top floor. I know it's not happy because I look at its exponent, and its exponent is a negative 25. So it's not happy on the top. So it has to move. The 3 has to go to the bottom floor. It's on the other place it can go. And then we have to put a 1 on top to make it so that it can be on the bottom. So that would be your final answer, 1 over 3 to the 25th power. Number 9, you can do a few different ways. I'm going to go ahead and just start by looking at this as an example of the product rule. So I have the same base 10 being multiplied, so I can add the exponent. So negative 12 plus 2 is the same thing as 10 to the negative 10th power. Remember, if you have a negative, 10, negative 12 plus 2, you're at negative 10. So 10 to the power of negative 10, it's in the apartment, remember because everything that comes into the apartment starts on the top floor if it doesn't say, and it's over an invisible 1. So 10 is not happy on the top floor of the apartment because it has a negative exponent. So I have to move it. So 10 to the 10th power goes on the bottom because once it moves, it's happy. So I change its negative exponent to a positive exponent, and there's a 1 on top. That's your final answer for number 9. Let's look at number 10. Broken into two problems. Let's start with the top floor of the apartment. Let's get that taken care of first. It's an example of the product rule on top. Since I have the same base, 7, being multiplied, I can add the exponents. So I have 7 to the ninth power on top, 7 to the 15th power on the bottom. Now we have an example of the quotient rule, where the same base is being divided, so I can subtract the exponents. So we want to do 15 minus 9. We know that that is 6. And since there's more numbers on the bottom, there's more 7s on the bottom, that exponent tells us how many 7s there are. There's more on the bottom than on the top. It's just going to stay on the bottom. So your final answer would be 1 over 7 to the 6th power. You could have done that a little bit differently. So let's look at number 11 with a different way. So you have y to the 5th over y to the 10th. You know that they're the same base being divided, so you can subtract the exponents. So you can do 5 minus 10, and you can get y to the negative 5th power times y squared, bringing that other one down. Now that you have the same base being multiplied, you know you can add the exponents. So you end up with y to the negative third power. And since y is not happy, you can simplify this one more step by just moving it downstairs and making it happy. So y, 1 over y cubed is your final answer for number 11. Number 12, we have multiple steps. So let's take this part one at a time. So I'll move to a new page because this is multi-step. Let's take it one step at a time. Let's start by looking at the top floor. You have 11 squared to the third power. I know this is an example of the power rule because I have a power to a power. So that means I can multiply the exponents. When you have a power to a power, you can multiply the exponents. So this is, this is the same thing as 11 to the 6th power over 11 to the 6th times 11 to the negative 4th power. So here I have an example of the quotient rule. When I have the same base being divided, I can subtract the exponents. So 6 minus 6 is 0. So I have 11 to the 0 power times 11 to the negative 4th power. And this is why anything to the 0 power just equals 1, because we have 11 to the 6th over 11 to the 6th. We know anything divided by itself just equals 1. This is the same thing in the quotient rule as 6 minus 6 equals 0. So we know that we can just cross that out because it equals 1. So this might be your final answer, but you can do one more thing. So we know it's not happy. We know this isn't our final, final answer because it is not happy in the apartment. So when we move into the apartment, we're on the top floor automatically. It's over an invisible 1. And we know that if it's on the top floor and it's not happy, it only has one other place to go. So it has to move to the bottom floor, and you have to have something on top 
because we know in math we have to make this a fraction. So a fraction has to have something on top. We put a placeholder 1. Your final answer will be 1 over 11 to the fourth power. So for this next set of questions, we're actually going to be able to apply these properties of exponents to fully simplify our answers and to answer some of these challenge questions. So let's go ahead and look at number 13. It says, how much greater is 2 to the third all to the second power than 2 to the third times 2 to the second power? So how much greater? Let's see. We want to start by simplifying what we can. So this is the first one is an example of the power rule. You have a base 2 with a power of 3 to a power of 2. If it's a power to a power, you can multiply the exponents. This is an example of 2 to the 6th power. And then this next one I'll do in red. This is 2 to the 3rd power times 2 to the 2nd power. When you have the same base being multiplied, you can add their exponents. This is 2 to the 5th. And it wants to know how much greater is this in blue than this in red? How much greater is it? So there's a few ways we can look at this. To compare these two numbers, I want to go ahead and simplify as much as I can. So I know that 2 to the 6th power is the same thing as 2 times itself 6 times. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 and so on. So that ends up with 64. And I'll do the same thing for 2 to the 5th power end up with 32. So you could look at this two ways. You might say this is like division. How much greater is it? I know that this in blue, 2 to the 6th, is 2 times greater than 2 to the 5th. I know it's 2 times as big. You could also say this is like a difference problem, like subtraction. And I know that 2 to the 6th is 32 more than 2 to the 5th. So either way you put it, 2 times bigger or 32 bigger, I would count both correct. Number 14 is a lot like number 12. What is the value of 15 to the 4th to the 2nd power all over 15 to the 8th power? When I look at this, I want to simplify the top part of the fraction first. So I would do the power rule, since it's a power to a power. I would multiply the exponents. So I have 15 to the 8th power over 15 to the 8th power. So anything divided by itself just equals 1. So anything, Mr. C divided by Mr. C just equals 1. 15 divided by 15 equals 1. So 15 to the 8th divided by 15 to the 8th still equals 1. You could also look at this as an example of your quotient rule. So you could look at this and realize the same base is being divided. So it means you can subtract the exponents. You end up with 15 to the 0 power. Well, I also know that anything to the 0 power also just equals 1. So no matter how you slice it, you should end up with 1 as your answer. And isn't 1 a lot simpler and easier than this big old thing? Let's look at number 15. It says, determine if the following equation is true or false. And it's just with variable bases, not as number bases. So let's look at this one piece at a time. Starting with this in purple, I just want to simplify what I can. So there's a power to a power on top, so I can do 9 times 1. It's just 9. So there's always an invisible one. It just says there's 1 a to the ninth on top. And then you have that over 4, which is the same thing as the quotient rule, where I have the same base being divided so I can subtract the exponent. So I have a to the fifth in purple. So that on the left ends up being a to the fifth. On the right, I have a to the eighth times a to the first. If they're the same base being multiplied, I can add the exponent. So looking at the top of that fraction first, I have a to the ninth over a to the fourth. And already you can see that they're equivalent because this in purple matches this in orange. So you can already see that these are going to both equal a to the fifth power. So to determine if the equation was true or false, it would be true. Let's do a couple more of these application questions. So number 16 says, which is greater, 4 to the power of negative 2 or 2 to the power of negative 4? How do you know? So let's start with making everybody happy. So let's start by looking in the apartment. And let's make everybody happy. So that's 4 to the negative 2 power. We want to just make happy so it goes 1 over 4 squared. And then this 2 to the negative 4th power. We want to make happy, so we'll go 1 over 2 to the 4th power now. So now they're both happy. So now we can simplify these as much as we can. Remember, this exponent doesn't say times 2. It says how many times this 4 is times itself. So this is the same thing as 1 16th. And when you do 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, you end up with the same thing, 1 over 16. So which is greater? Neither. They're both equal to 1 16th. Number 17 looks a little tricky because it says find the value of x to make the following equation true. Really, let's just start by simplifying what we can in green. So you have n to the 10th power over n to the 12th. They're being divided, and they have the same base, so you can subtract the exponents. This is the same thing as n to the power of negative 2, or 1 over n squared. That needs to equal n to an exponent. So what this is saying is that you have here a happy n. But over here, 
in is not happy and needed to move. So it's like giving you the ending of the story before it gives you the beginning of the story. What had to happen here for in to move? Well, we know that this isn't a question. This exponent had to be a negative upstairs. If it's negative upstairs, you had to move it downstairs. We'll do the same thing for number 18. Find the value of x to make the equation true. This time we'll start on the right. So we'll start on the right with orange. We want to look at the top floor first. You have 3 to the 7th times 3 to the 3rd. They're the same base being multiplied, so I can add the exponent. So you have 3 to the 10th over 3 to the 11th. I can simplify one more step. This is an example of the quotient rule. The same base is being divided. That means I can subtract the exponent. So I can do 11 minus 10. There's more 11s on the bottom, so I'm going to stay on the bottom. This is the same thing as 1 over 3. So I did what I can do over there on the right. Let's look on the left. You want to simplify using your power rule first. You can do a power to a power. That's 3 squared to the third power. So you can multiply the exponents. This is the same thing as 3 to the sixth power times 3 to what number do I need to get it to be equal to 1 over 3 or 3 to the power of negative 1 is really what that is. 1 over 3 is the same thing as 3 to the power of negative 1. So what I need to do is think about what is going to go here. That's going to be a negative number and it has to be one more negative than this 6. So it would be a negative 7. That's what I would put in here for the exponent. Number 19 says explain the difference between a parentheses negative 12 squared and a negative 12 squared without a parentheses. Here's the difference. It, it's the parentheses. If I have it in parentheses, that means that this is negative 12 times negative 12. That is 144. But this one over here says do 12 squared and then take the opposite of that. So do 12 squared, which is 144, and then there's an opposite sign, so the opposite of that. The first one will give you a positive 144. The second one will give you a negative 144. So even your calculator will think that this is PEMDAS. You're doing your exponent before you technically multiply by negative 1. So always use your parentheses if you want your answer to be a positive whenever you're squaring a number. So we're continuing with evaluating square and cube roots. Number 20 says evaluate 2 thirds to the second power. So this is the same thing as 2 squared over 3 squared. So we do 2 times 2 is 4 and 3 times 3, which is 9. So 4 ninths is your final answer. Number 21 says evaluate negative 5 cubed. So we always do, if there's no parentheses, the exponent first. So 5 times 5 times 5. So we do 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 is 125. And then it said, what's the opposite of that? So it would be negative 125. 22 says find both square roots of 196. So the square root of 196 means what times itself equals 196. You can use your chart. That will be 14. And since it says find both, it means what number times itself could give you that. Well, I know a negative times a negative is also going to be positive. So it could be a positive 14 or a negative 14. So this is the way we would write that, a positive or negative 14, plus or minus 14. Number 23 says evaluate the cube root of 64. So what times itself three times gives you 64? So you could do a factor tree. You could look at your chart. You could type it in the calculator, but either way you should end up realizing that four times four times four gives you 64. So four would be the cube root of 64. 24 is a fraction. It says find the cube root of each part of this fraction. So find the cube root of 125. That's five. And then the cube root of 216. So what times itself three times gives you 216? That would be 6. So when it's written like a fraction, just break it apart. Let's look at number 25. It says, Willa purchases a vase for her kitchen that is shaped like a cube and will hold 343 cubic inches of water. So here's the cube. And since it told you it's cubic inches, that means that the volume is 343 inches cubed. So we're given the volume. It says, what's the length, width, and height of the vase? So we know that the volume equals length times width times height. We know if it's a cube, it's the same length, the same width, and the same height. This is telling you to do the cube root of 343. If you type that in your calculator or you use your chart, either way you should realize 7 inches would be the length of the length, width, and height of the vase. Let's look at 26. It says in the middle of a park, there's a fenced off area. In the shape of the fence is a square. When it tells me there's a shape, I draw it. It says, if the area of the fenced off portion is 225 square yards, what is the perimeter of the fence? So I'm looking at a square with an area of 225 yards. That means that this length times this length gave me the area. 
So the same number multiplied by itself gave me 225. This is the same thing as finding the square root of 225. I'm thinking what number multiplied by itself to give me 225. I know that 15 times 15 equals 225. So 15 is the length of one side. But the question is asking what's the perimeter. So the question is asking what are all the side lengths added up? What are all the side lengths added up? So 15 plus 15 plus 15 plus 15 or 15 times 4. Either way you dice it, you get 60 yards. And then I abbreviated that YDS. It's not squared. This is the important part. Just like this one is not cubed, this one's not squared because it's only the length of the perimeter. It's all the side lengths added up. It's not an area. It's just the length of the sides added up. This one, seven inches, was just the length of one side. So it's not going to be squared or cubed. So moving on, the next section is about estimating large and small values using powers of 10. This is our scientific notation section. So 27 says rewrite the following value as a single digit times a power of 10, a.k.a. rewrite this number in standard form in scientific notation. So we do that by plotting a decimal point between the first two numbers, making it a number between 1 and 10. We write down all those significant digits, 8.29 are all the actual numbers here. Then we want to count how many times we move the decimal. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times. We always use a base 10 value, and the exponent tells you how many times you move the decimal. You put a time sign in between, and this is your final answer. Since it said estimate, you could also just write this as about 8 times 10 to the 7th. Since it said estimate, this could be an acceptable answer, but this is the most correct answer because this is exactly what it is. Number 28 is asking you to do the same thing. It says rewrite the following value as a single digit times the power of 10. So we want to go ahead and move the decimal between the first two numbers. It said single digit, so it's asking you to estimate um, or round up. So you could write 7 times 10 to the negative 6. But I'm going to go ahead and just write 6.8 because I'm just going to be exact. And then it tells you to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times. So it's going to have an exponent of 6. It's a negative 6, remember, because it's a very small number. So really small numbers get negative exponents. Number 29 is a word problem about Levi. He's a writer, and he last month wrote 125 words of the book. This month, he's up to about 12,580 words. About how many times more words has he written this month than the first month? If it asks you how many times more, that's asking you to divide. So if I type that in the calculator, I got 100.64. So about, and I can use those little squiggles for about, it's a squiggly equal sign, about 100 times. If you wanted to write that in scientific notation, you could have written that as 1 times 10 squared times. Either way, about 100 times more. So now we're no longer estimating. Now we're going to be able to use scientific notation for very large and very small quantities. Let's look at number 30. A marine biologist discovered species with a diameter of 0 .00085 inches. Express this measurement using scientific notation. We always put a decimal between the first two significant digits to create a number between 1 and 10. So 8.5 is our first number. This is going to be always a times 10. And then the exponent is how many times we move to the decimal. 1, 2, 3, 4 times. So if it's a really small number, it's going to be a negative 4. 31 says that Frankie entered a sweepstakes to win a grand prize of this big old number. So express this amount using scientific notation. So we always put a decimal between the first two numbers because it makes a number between 1 and 10. Should be 1.05. Don't forget about that 5. It is significant when you go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 to get there. So 1.05 times 10 to the 10th power because it's many times it took you to get there. So the exponent tells you how many times you move the decimal. Let's look at number 32, which of the following is a correct representation of this. So the first number has to be between 1 and 10. So you can already roll out A. You can already roll out B. And it's a really small number, so it has to be B with the negative exponent. Number 33 said, which of the following has a value that is greater than 10,000 but less than 100,000? So go ahead and simplify all of these out and then see which one is greater than 10,000 but less than 100,000. Just by moving the decimal, I can already see that it's not going to be the first two. It's also not going to be C. When I look at D, I got 87,210, which is greater than 10,000 but less than 100,000. So your final answer should be D. The last section is about performing operations with scientific notation. So add, subtract, multiply, and divide, and divide in scientific notation. So I'll start with number 34. If I'm adding or subtracting in scientific notation, they have to have the same base 10. So I'm going to rewrite this one with a base 10 value. You could also expand this out and write it like this in standard form. Whichever way works for you is fine. So I rewrote this as 1.2 times 10 to the 6th power. That's how many times I moved the decimal. 
I know they have the same base 10 with the same exponent of 6. So I know that I can just subtract their um, decimal numbers here. 8.45 minus 1.2 is 7.25. And then I keep that same base 10. So times 10 to the 6th. In standard notation, I move the decimal over 6 times and end up with this really big number. Let's look at number 35. I'll show you the other way. So the other way to do this is to make this number in standard notation. So let's go ahead and make it match this number. So I'll rewrite it. And we move the decimal back one, two, three, four, five times and fill the rest with placeholder zeros. So this is this number in standard form. I'm going to go ahead and add it to this number, lining them up on the decimal. So I line them up and I have an extra space here. So anything that is extra, you put a placeholder zero. Then you add and subtract straight down. So adding, we're going to do zero plus three is three. Five plus three is eight. And then keep the rest zeros. So 0 0.00083 is our answer in standard notation. And we want to move it to scientific notation. So we go one, two, three, four, five times we move the decimal. And it is a negative because it's a really small number. So that's how you do number 35. Let's look at 36. It's a word problem. After Becca's half marathon, her pedometer showed 23,580 steps while Alex recorded 2.42 times 10 to the fourth steps after the same race. What's their combined amount of steps? Combined means add. So add those together. I chose to write this number in scientific notation in standard form, and then I'm just gonna add and subtract straight up and down. So this is an addition problem since it says combined. So I just add straight up and down along the decimal, and they both have decimals at the end now. So we can just add straight down to get this answer. So then I also wanna put it in scientific notation. So I moved the decimal back between the four and the seven and rewrite it with a base 10 value. And I moved it four times, so that's it for that. Let's look at the next three, and these are our last three. So let's go ahead and get through this. Number 37 says divide. It's a division problem because there's this little fraction bar. So what I want to do is I want to break it apart into two problems. I want to break it apart into our number divided by our number. We get 1.8 as our answer. And then we also want to break it apart into our base 10 divided by our base 10 and use our quotient rule. If it's the same base being divided, I can subtract the exponent. Negative 3 minus negative 5 is the same thing as negative 3 plus 5, which is 2. So I rewrite this as 1.8 times 10 with an exponent of 2. In standard notation, this is just 180. So for 38, to use that shortcut where I only mess with the numbers uh, by themselves, I need to rewrite this in scientific notation. So now I'm going to do 5.28 times 10 to the third. That's the same thing as this. Now I only mess with the numbers. So 3 times 5.28 gave me 15.84. However, I want this in scientific notation, so i got to move the decimal back one because it has to be between 1 and 10, that first number. So I keep that times 10. And then this was an example of the product rule. 10 to the 6 and 10 to the 3rd are being multiplied. So you can add the exponents. 6 plus 3 is 9. Plus we had to move the decimal back one more time. So a base 10. In standard notation, this is the same thing as this gigantic number. And then last one, 39. From her campsite, Ava estimated she could see 2,500 stars without a telescope. She read once that a certain galaxy had 5 times 10 to the 11th power of stars. How many times more stars did the galaxy contain than what Ava estimates she can see? So how many times more means divide. I'll take the bigger number, 5 times 10 to the 11th, divided by the smaller number, 2,500, or 2.5 times 10 to the third power. I know that 5 divided by 2.5 is 2. And I know that if I'm dividing, I can subtract the exponent, so I end up with 10 to the 8th power. So that is, in reality, 200 million. All right, guys, that's it. If you made it to the end of this video, please comment how many people are in this world. Today, we went over your exponents and scientific notation unit study guide to get ready for our test. On the test, you can expect to see exponent rules, square and cube roots, operations with scientific notation. And you should know now what you're really good at and what you're not so hot at. So take the things that you're not so great at, and let's focus on those by going back and rewatching some of the videos for those lessons and taking those notes making sure that you've done more practice for those questions and asking me for help. So let me know if you have any questions. Bye.